What's up guys, RV Tech Pro. Got another little tool haul. This one's gonna be a Amazon tool haul for the most part. Got a couple other things we're gonna take a look at that I recently used that worked out really nice. So, uh, and one slightly uh, negative, but I gotta keep it real and I also have to uh, stay honest. So I'll show you, I have one negative thing to speak about as well. So trim kit, I got this off of Amazon. It didn't cost much money. Um, I don't I don't remember how much it cost, but it wasn't much money. And I had, I have the snap-on kit and I use these, but as, and these are the strikeable ones, all of the snap-on ones strikeable maybe usa we know that um but they have for a lot of the motor homes and the trucks and things that i'm working with because i'm working with regular suvs and trucks doing the brake controllers and some of those especially when you get into like some of your nissans your audis your uh higher some of your higher end vehicles your mercedes and stuff like that they want the red art controller because they don't want the big box hanging down and you have to drill holes and take a lot of trim out of the dash to get to it. So this kit had some finer profiles that I didn't have in the snap-on kit. These are all the tips, all the bases of these are strikeable like that. And as you can see, most of those are pretty big. This is about the smallest one that I had in the snap-on. And uh, let's get that out of there. So that's about the smallest one. So they had some different profiles that I like, especially that. I like that it's a little crowbar hook. And then it also came with this uh, I guess that could be a 45, 45 degree in that. I like the one Lyle makes better for this because it has a ball right there near the brake. So as your pivot point, it's protecting the, uh, the plastic, the trim, which is important in my line of work for the customers that I deal with. A lot of them have high-end campers and high-end trucks and SUVs. So definitely don't want to tear up or make any scratches. So like I have other tools like these, but I, this one has a, a harder bend than uh, most of my snap-ons and I may even still get the Lau. I like the way they flatten that out. So, uh, yeah, anything to help not mar. So, of course, this is a non-marring set. This is a non-marring set, but sometimes I need something tougher like these. This, to pop a hard panel loose. Um, so it's nice to have that one with the ball on it. So I'll probably pick it up as well. This kit worked very good. This is a Harbor Freight's version of the Lau. It, it, does, it doesn't even say anything, have a name on it or anything, but this is what it is. Lau makes that, Harbor Freight copied it. I used it on the uh, Suzuki. My nephew, it was uh, he borrowed that and it was running hot on him. Turned out to be a radiator hose spring clamp. I changed that out. Got to use these ratcheting spring clamp pliers. They worked out very well. The only thing I don't like about these Craftsman ones is that the, uh, the ratcheting mechanism, when it gets to the point to where it's really tight, it, it won't click in that's the furthest it, it will go so I, I had to squeeze the handles to get it so i can move the clamp 
along the hose. But other than that, they worked fine. They held it pretty good. It was loose. I just wanted it a little bit tighter. Um, so I'll probably be in the market for another pair of those that work a little better. But anyway, that this works really well. It, it's the same. I, I compared it to the, the Lyle one and it has all the same pieces in it. It's just about $20 cheaper, so there's that. All right. Now for my RV guys, which all of this is kind of geared towards my RV guys. It could cross over based on the type of work you do. We have this Malco made in USA. And what this is, this is for working on air conditioning, condenser coils, evaporator coils. They, they get smashed up a lot. And when you're doing your uh, annual AC service, you need something like this when you're cleaning the coils to uh, straighten out the fins. Here's another version. I got all of this off of Amazon and uh, it's just color coded with uh, the numbers on there. So I have the ring and then I got the Malco with the nice the nice handle that has a nice grip and you can just spin that around and uh, get to the combs you need. So it's about to be that time guys in South Carolina. It's about to warm up after a while and it's gonna be a lot of AC services. The furnace services are gonna die back and the AC services are gonna be in full effect. Um, these are some of the tools you need. I also got a gallon, some stuff that didn't come in I got like a gallon of the uh, coil cleaner in bulk. So spray those down when you're doing those services. And then, of course, clean out your fins, blow it out, air, water. This is a special tool for um, like your smaller airstreams, like your Bambis, some of the older base camps, and a few other camper brands have used this style for um, key on the stabilizer jacks where you just have a threaded rod that's been pinched on the end. It needs one of these. This one's made to go on the drill so that you can get them up and down quickly. So that's uh, that helps you with speed for you guys that are out there, flat rate. Fortunately, I mean, I don't have to kind of worry about that anymore. There's a couple of comments a couple of guys are making, but people don't understand that I'm a business owner and I do charge my customer flat rate, but I get the whole rate. I'm not getting paid 20 or $30 an hour, like a mechanic or whatever. And that's all they get. So they have to rush to try to beat the clock and they're worried about the 0.7 and, and all of this. I, I don't have to worry about that. I, I'm a mobile RV technician for a company that I own and operate. So in your shop, for the mechanics out there, they're charging at $175 an hour. You know, you look in the book, I have a flat rate manual and job calls for four hours and you're breaking your neck to try to get it done before the four hours, I get the whole 175 an hour. So it's a little different for me. You know, I don't have to rush through this stuff. So that's just uh, a way that God has blessed me. And uh, I definitely appreciate it. And I uh, take care of my customers as much as I can. Now, I bought this several months ago. It's a, uh, it's a scraper by Blue Point. Never used it, but I use it today because on my wife's daily driver, she wants the tents removed. She says it's too dark. She doesn't like it. She almost got into an accident. She didn't see a car coming across the intersection. It almost hit her. So I use this to, and it still has a little bit of the window tint on it. I was scraping the window and, and it does a great job. The ergonomics of this is awesome. If you're holding it from the side and this is all aluminum construction the screw that holds the blade in and the blade is keyed in this is keyed so when you 
you can see that it holds the blade in very steady the blade no wiggle at all and then you tighten it up with this thumb screw which also when you're scraping gives you a handle and it uh awesome tool so if you have to do any type of scraping like that and i got a lot of other scrapers but i need a razor scraper and i was using just a bare razor which is dangerous and i was like come on man you know you have a scraper so go get it so i got it made the job a lot easier she's happy her windows are clear and i'm happy because this made the job a lot easier and safer and this is just going in my truck because i picked this up most of the stuff is going on my truck not so much for the toolbox um this stuff's going in my truck for my uh my, my my business truck so that's where this stuff will be headed that's all for now rv tech Pro oh wait a minute almost forgot i gotta i ran out of room of course so now i have three wrench drawers i ran out of room i kept of course you know i, I recently bought a couple more sets of wrenches three more sets to be exact so uh I took all the stuff that was in this drawer, which is pretty deep, and it wasn't really holding much, and I just kind of combined it with, with this stuff. It's kind of like junk drawer, but I mean, it has real stuff in there, some blow mold cases, some hardware and stuff. But yeah, this is where I ended up putting those Icon wrenches. Now the wrenches, they work fine. The one I was using um was a 16 millimeter i was using this in place of a 5 8 as i stated in the video about the uh the k1500 doing the power steering high pressure line and 16 millimeter and 5 8 are basically the same guys so get over it but look at the wear this is just from me using this wrench one time the finish scratches up really easy and it comes off. So the chrome on there, even though when they're new, they look super nice. But after you use them one time, they, they don't look like that. So you, the old adage is true. You get what you paid for. Now this, this snap on three quarter, this wrench is well used and mm, probably six years old. You can look at the wear on it and it has a lot of scratches and stuff on it. You know, Chrome still looks pretty good. It's, it's all scratched up. It's, I, you know, I'm working on a car, I'm on my back on the concrete, the stuff that I just, you know, the wrenches just get tossed, but this wrench, you know, looks like that six-year-old snap one. And it, I've only used that icon one time. So that's one uh, negative thing that I found when I was using the icon wrench was after I started cleaning everything up. I noticed that uh, the finish is not durable, you know, and this wrench isn't even clean because a lot of times I just throw them back in there. But that's over six years of use. And my icon kind of looks like that after one use on one job, you know, so something to think about guys. So maybe that's why Snap-on charge is $515 for theirs. I, I'm still not gonna, cause I don't use those uh, type of rationing wrenches very much. So I'm not gonna pay that, but yeah, that's all for now. RV Tech Pro out.